So I just, I actually don't have a lot of data. I just grabbed some stuff from my laboratory. Uh, I just showed you that. Um, here's the system that we're using. A new system is under development. Um, Demetrius and I are working on it, and um, it's, it's incredibly exciting. Unfortunately, we're both limited that we can't say a lot about it right now. Um, but I just showed you this slide. This is from Demetrius's work uh, showing in, in a pig model uh, the healing of the device. And he uh, got incredibly sharp images. You can see the flow diverter, you can see uh, the intimal hyperplasia, and the, and the correlates with histology are just spectacular. So like Patrick said, this is almost like doing histology except in vivo. Um, what I wanted to just show you is, is something that we just submitted for publication, so it's not yet published. Um, but what we looked at was when you have an aneurysm, so here's our aneurysm, and like Patrick said, one of the limitations of the existing system is the field of view, which um, that's based on optics circa 2001. The new age optics, uh, we can get a much larger field of view and, and improved uh, spatial resolution. Um, and what we looked at was at this aneurysm neck, if there is malapposition of the device in communication with the aneurysm, so at the level of the aneurysm neck, and we asked, does that make a difference for early occlusion of these aneurysms? So here is an aneurysm treated um, with, a, with a flow diverter, excellent apposition at the neck of the aneurysm. 30 days later, there's absolutely no aneurysm. Here's another case where we do have this thing that we term communicating malapposition, and the aneurysm is widely patent 30 days later. Um, and when we looked at this as a predictor for early occlusion, we found a highly uh, statistically significant uh, uh, relationship. Uh, communicating malapposition means a very unlikely that the aneurysm uh, will occlude early. Um, and then we also looked at, so just like you, when we saw all of the stuff on OCT, clinically now we angioplasty just about every stent. Because even with vaso-CT, which has 60 micron um, isotropic voxels at its highest resolution. The problem is, is that it acquires 617 images over 20 seconds, and during that 20 seconds, you have multiple cardiac cycles. So you have a partial volume averaging of the flow diverter and the vessel wall. And so, don't get me wrong, it's incredible imaging, but I think when you're looking really at the, the device and the vessel wall, looking at these small extensive malapposition is impossible with existing radiographic techniques. So um, we ubiquitously apply balloon angioplasty. And I want to say in our experiments, that tended to make things better. So we improved the apposition. And I'll show you a case right here. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not in the slide deck. But um, when you do improve the apposition, then you're more likely to get early occlusion of the aneurysm. However, in one case, there was no communicating malapposition prior to balloon angioplasty, and by doing the balloon angioplasty, we created it. So I don't think ubiquitous use of balloon angioplasty is necessarily the answer, um, and that's why I think we need technologies like this. So we submitted an NIH grant for it, um, and the first round, hey guys, this is amazing science, I can't believe that you can do all the things you say you can do, um, but the problem is there's no clinical utility. Um, so I really hope that people in this audience understand and maybe give me feedback. No, we don't need this. We need something else. I know you're working on a direct visualization system. But what, what is the clinical utility of these things? That's been our Achilles heel to date. Um, so I'll just leave you with that. Uh, here are the challenges. These challenges are actually already developed. Catheter design, the profile has to be reduced. It has to be the same thing as a micro guide wire. Uh, has to be navigable in tortuosity. Like Patrick mentioned, you have a spinning laser, so when you pull it back, it can't break. Um, and importantly, there's nerds, so when you're in tortuosity, you can have some optical uh, problems uh, with the imaging system that can create artifacts. Um, we need to improve the resolution because flow diverters, like I said, we're braiding technologies now at 12 microns, so resolution has to be there. Definitely increase the field of view, as Patrick just showed nicely in that very large aneurysm. We want to use this as a diagnostic assay in cases with multiple aneurysms to try to determine which is the ruptured aneurysm. So we really want to see into the wall of the aneurysm. And of course, you have to have a blood-free area, so optimizing the flush protocol is critical. Um, thank you very much.